Well, joining us now to discuss is retired U.S. military intelligence officer Stephen Rogers and nationally known expert in national security and counterterrorism, John Rosamondo. Thank you both very much for joining us. Um, let's begin with this, what we were just discussing. Many Jewish leaders, they're saying that the FBI got it wrong from the initial, um, from the very beginning, after an FBI official initially said that the Texas synagogue hostage takers demands were not specifically related to the Jewish community. Listen to this. Uh, we, we, we do believe from our engagement with this subject that he was singularly focused on one issue uh, and it was not specifically related to the Jewish community, uh, but we're continuing to work to find motive and, and we will continue on that path. In terms of the resolution of the incident, uh, the, the hostage taker is deceased. So the FBI followed up with a statement late Sunday clarifying their position, saying that this is, in fact, a terrorism-related matter in which the Jewish community was targeted and that it is being investigated by the Joint Terrorism Task Force and that preventing acts of terrorism and violence is the number one priority of the FBI. But, John, I'll start with you. Why do you think that they were so hesitant to state the obvious, as it was obvious to everyone else in this country, what had transpired? Well, I think you have to go back to the Obama administration uh, when a uh, Soros-led uh, uh, group uh, or when got the FBI to uh, purge its uh, terrorism training manuals and so forth. And I know from talking with uh, FBI agents in the Obama years that they uh, forced out uh, people who uh, weren't on board with the idea that uh, religion wasn't involved. So I think that this is about political correctness, as opposed to looking at uh, the fact that uh, the uh, kidnapper uh, was involved in anti-Israel, anti-Palestinian stuff, then that he belonged to Tablighi Jamaat, which is a group that's been involved in radicalization and, uh, you know, with al-Qaeda, ISIS, and so forth. Saudi Arabia just banned them last month. Uh, you know, uh, Stephen, when the reports over the weekend said the FBI didn't know the motive for the kidnapping, President Biden um, telling reporters that authorities, quote, just didn't have enough facts. He didn't think that there was sufficient information to know about why he targeted that synagogue, why he insisted on the release of someone who's been in prison for over 10 years. And then it goes on from there. And then we heard uh, James Rosen report that the president then tried to pivot to gun control. How did this gentleman get into the country to begin with? Well, uh, to begin with, the FBI, down to the local cop there, did an outstanding job and ensured that none of the victims were injured or killed. But I could tell you this, when the FBI agent got behind that podium, I was appalled that he would suggest that this was not targeted against the Jewish community. I spent 38 years in law enforcement. I worked at FBI headquarters at the Joint Terrorism Task Force. I've got to tell you, I was appalled. And to your point, Heather, the reason why I was appalled was that we did not have any information with regard to the motive. We don't know how he got into the country. We really don't know who this person is. So okay. the FBI should have waited until they completed a thorough and comprehensive investigation. And one more thing, what's troubling about this to me now is that as I hear this over and over again, there seems to be this minimizing of anti-Semitism attacks in this country. I have a problem with that. I mean, we've been living with this since the 70s, 80s, maybe 90s, forever. But we need to get our law enforcement agencies from federal government to local government to aggressively go after those people who are supporting an anti-Semitism movement across this country. Yeah, but John, at the same time, in one of his very first acts in office, President Biden revoked several of President Trump's executive orders that called for enhanced vetting and processes uh, for detecting attempted entry into the United States by terrorists such as this or other uh, public safety threats. Well, if you look at uh, the history of uh, President Biden and before the Obama administration, there's always been an effort to uh, minimize the uh, connection between uh, you know, terrorists and uh, you know, Islamic extremism, et cetera. Uh, I think that uh, they have a, they're following some very extreme, very radical uh, uh, supporters and uh, not looking at the uh, interest of the American people. I mean, for example, uh, the uh, Tablighi Jamaat, uh, which this man belonged to, was under a DHS investigation until it was shut down by the Obama administration due to uh, pressure for some of these groups. 
And you, you were involved in investigations looking into the woman that he repeatedly referenced while he was holding these folks hostages, referred to her as a sister and come to find out not an actual biological sister, but he believed in several of the same things that she does. Well, the uh, number one thing about Afia Siddiqui is, you know, she was uh, convicted uh, 10 years ago of uh, trying to uh, kill American soldiers or plotting to do so. Mm -hmm. And uh, she is married uh, to uh, the uh, nephew of uh, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, the uh, mastermind of 9-11. So uh, there's a lot of strong support for getting her out of prison. Uh, don't forget that James Foley was uh, murdered by uh, ISIS uh, because the U.S. wouldn't turn him over. So uh, turn her over, rather. Married to the nephew of Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, but yet initially no one seemed to want to mention the word terrorism or possible ties to terrorism when this happened over the weekend. 11-hour standoff thankfully ended with none of the hostages dead. Uh, Steve Rogers, John Rosamondo, thank you both very much for joining us. Thank you. All right.